Hello everyone, welcome back to our rundown of all the movies here in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. And uh, today we are going to be going over... Avengers! <laughs> Avengers! <laughs> okay, Avengers. Avengers was the culmination of several years and uh, um, a lot of planning. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, just, uh, But also just, um, it was a long time coming to just see the movie... Period. Yeah, Ever yeah. Since like, uh, see, I always think back to my childhood when we were lucky to get one or two really half-assed, you know, superhero movies yeah, each yeah. year, and now we're getting, you know, a bunch of them every summer, and you know, far more vividly realized and you know, close to the comics than uh, that we always hoped for. Now we're getting on a regular basis because now all of a sudden, you know, these movies make you know massive amounts of money. 100% of the time, pretty much. Before all these movies started rolling in, everybody knew that we were going to get an X-Men movie long before we got an Avengers movie. Because in X-Men, they're a team first before they're individuals. Yeah. You don't have to do a movie all about Wolverine, all about Cyclops or Professor X. You're supposed to start with them all together. Yeah. So that's easy. That makes sense. Yeah. Avengers but... takes is a lot tougher... Of an egg to crack. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the whole point of, like, way back to the original comics was all about taking characters that already existed elsewhere in Marvel Comics, usually in solo titles, and uh, bringing them all together into one team. And that's essentially what they did in the movies. Everybody gets their own... Not everybody, but, every, yeah. uh, but most of the characters are introduced uh, in separate films, uh, separate but interconnected, just like in the old days of Marvel as well. And uh, then, they, then it all comes together in... Uh, Marvel's Avengers. And as we've learned, you know, um, the first five movies plus this one represent what's now called Phase 1. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now we're... And after that is uh, Phase 2 leading to the second Avengers movie, and then presumably Phase 3 is everything else leading to the uh, the next Avengers movie after that. One of the things I'm very happy about is how little the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, uses the Ultimates version of the team other than Nick Fury looking like Samuel L. Jackson yeah that's pretty much all they went with everything else is much more classical uh, much more uh, fun than the more cynical nihilistic vision that uh, Mark Miller had for the um, for the team when he um, put his spin on it there are certain references to the ultimate versions in Thor's movie when he first shows up on Earth, claiming to be the Thunder God, everybody thinks he's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. And uh, you know, Hawkeye, Hawkeye's definitely more like his ultimate version, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. In that he doesn't wear the mask. Most of the characters don't wear masks. By the way, you notice every time we do a movie poster, everybody we have to see all the actors' faces. Yeah, yeah. Which is something that never occurred to me, um, but makes sense because you know you want to show off your cast, not just your, you know, not just the characters from the comics. But also the actors that are, you know, the box office draws here. I just kind of like the idea that Marvel was like, okay, Joss, you're doing Loki and Aliens. Figure it out. <laughs> Maybe there was more going into it. But, uh, you know, he was tasked with trying to create a nice um, a balance of the, of the whole team. Everybody getting as much to do in the story as possible. And uh, one of the ways he does that is, as far as Loki, everybody gets their licks in. <laughs> yeah. Everybody uh, gets a chance to um, take a shot at Loki at some point. Yeah. And I do like how uh, he's he's just enough of a master manipulator that it makes sense that uh, all these guys would have to come together to stop him. And also another thing that is referenced from the ultimate versions of these characters uh, is the aliens that they picked to be uh, the invaders for the last act of the movie called yeah. the Shatari, which is the aliens from the... Uh, is it the... Is that, no, yeah, it's the first uh, Ultimates storyline. That's the climax of that. Now, of course... The Shatari in the comic are basically the uh, uh, scarier versions of the Skrulls. Yeah, yeah. These guys are just a pretty generic uh, group of you know hostile bad guys. Yeah, which is fine because like even in the Ultimates, the Shatari were kind of meant to be a pretty generic alien threat, and even the way that they're designed in the film ha is much more interesting than what they got going on in that book. It's just like they right. got these okay. triangle ships and stuff and. We don't really see their original form too much, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like that. It actually um, mixes it up and uh, makes it seem more comic booky, not less. Like, everybody knows that it's great. Everyone knows that uh, yeah. they managed to um, uh, deliver on the promise of yeah, the and shared the, and, universe. And, yeah, I mean, the amount of stuff, that, the amount of things that you have to 
hit a bullseye on for this movie to work, and they hit pretty much every time. There's certain things that uh, I I remember, you know, following a message board about. Okay, what are some things that you didn't like about Avengers? Yeah. Some people sharing their things. One thing that I would have liked to see more of is, as far as each film setting up the team up, would be if, as far as the music goes, like if each character had kind of their own orchestral, you know, identifiable theme song, and you can kind of weave those together in the end of the movie as they come together as a team. Yeah. Um, like I know that I know that in the Iron Man movie he definitely has his own theme song as he's testing out his armor. Yeah. That that would have fit in here. Um, yeah, but but, but yeah. really the team just has just the team has its own theme song that everybody kind of knows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I guess we should address uh, the uh, the big recasting here, which is uh, Mark Ruffalo right, now right. playing Bruce Banner instead of Edward Norton, because I guess uh, over behind the scenes stuff. Uh, on Incredible Hulk, they had kind of a falling out, and so uh, yeah, Edward yeah. Norton left, and then uh, Mark Ruffalo came in his place, and now he is, uh, and and he's Bruce Banner now. He you know, came yeah, in at the yeah. end of Iron Man three later on, and then yeah. he's in the second Avengers movie too. Seems kind of hard to imagine Mark Ruffalo in Incredible Hulk, not just in terms of the way the character is written, but also as far as being a guy who would be expected to uh, uh, carry a movie at that time. I guess. I suppose um, th- there would have been differences in their performances, either if you had Mark Ruffalo in that movie or Ed Norton in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think uh, either one could have been made to work. Um, yeah, yeah. I w- it would have been nice to have that uh, continuity there with um, yeah. everything flowing in. And it would have been nice if, uh, like, it seems that over time, Incredible Hulk still happened. They, you know, make a reference to the, the final fight from that movie in yeah, here yeah. about, you know, how I broke Harlem. Yeah. But for the most part, they don't reference uh, Incredible Hulk very much, even yeah, if it yeah. did, even if it's still canon. I can certainly look at Edward Norton and say, yeah, that's Bruce Banner. And I can look at Mark Ruffalo and go, that's Bruce Banner. He was really good. Yeah, yeah, he's great. It's, you know, I love how he's, they kind of uh, wrote him a little more um, interesting where he kind of gets nervous when he's on the helicarrier. He gets surrounded by um, agents and stuff. And then the scenes between him and Tony are great, of course. And also, I uh, just want to mention one line where they discover where the reveal of the helicarrier, the aircraft carrier turns into the helicarrier. Yeah. I think that that would be safer for him to be on the submarine because if anything goes wrong, as we've seen this film, he can just jump out. Yeah. <laughs> Can't really jump out of a submarine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Phil Coulson. Yeah, the rise of Agent Coulson. Mm-hmm. It's played by Clark Gregg. Even though they killed him in classic Joss Whedon style, although Joss swears that uh, killing him was Kevin Feige's idea. Yeah. I assume it was also Kevin Feige's idea to bring him back for the show. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has turned into a really good show. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I do like kind of seeing him back. It is kind of... It does kind of suck that it's now become a thing that almost every one of these movies has a scene where somebody dies, but then they're alive again at the end. Yeah, yeah, but we'll go over that later on. I remember when um, Age of Shield first started. Um, my car Greg talking about how for him Marvel is like the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, and it is. Yeah, yeah, and you know he's 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 great on Age of Shield now. The whole that whole show is great, but you know we'll do a whole a separate thing on that. When the Battle of New York, once the whole team is together, first thing everybody does is they turn to Captain America for the battle plan. Yeah, and he delivers. Door you bomb like a portal. Iron Man, you got the perimeter. Hulk. Smash. Yeah. Yes, perfect. I really liked how in the battle there seems to be a lot of attention given to maintaining a clear sense of geography throughout all the mayhem. Yeah, you probably figured that uh, when they were playing the sequence they had a, you know, they had a map of New York and like, okay, uh, Star Tower's here and then we're going to have Cap and Black Widow here for their skirmishing. And it's just with that one long uh, shot where we, you know, check in with each Avenger. Yes, uh, yes. And, you know, what they're doing fighting the aliens. And yeah. Having a nice variety of powers going on. Yes. Was uh, very... Unlike anything we'd ever seen. Even, like, X-Men hadn't really given us... Yeah, no, quite no, like not that. close. Like, not until maybe Days of Future Past where they're fighting all the Sentinels yeah. in the future did we even come close. Yeah. Uh, but this was like, yeah, this is why you make an Avengers movie is so... Everything can go nuts like that. Yeah. We watched the movie this time. We uh, made sure to include the um, I believe scene introducing Captain America. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was actually a really great and a really beautiful uh, little scene. Yeah. And uh, it was probably cut just because it uh, threw off the building of tension and the pacing. And yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, they do create a nice rhythm of you know Nick recruiting Cap. And then uh, Coles has he uh, Coulson recruiting Iron Man yeah, and yeah. Black Widow recruiting Hulk. And you have to 
um, just kind of stop the movie while we uh, hang out with Cat for a little while, yeah, and then get sure back to the movie up. with Yuri recruiting him and everybody else uh, kind of coming together. Might have slowed the movie down, um, yeah, but on its own, it actually really is a nice. Um, I'm taking some time out to revisit Cap and see how he's reacting to the temporal displacement yeah, experience. Yeah, just being the man out of time again. Yeah, yeah. And also we get a little bit more with uh, the waitress played by Ashley Johnson. Now, once we have that, it, ma- it makes more sense for her to have uh, so much screen time later on after the battle starts and then at the end. And also we get the original Stanley cameo before they do yes. another one after that scene was cut. So that's Avengers, and that's phase one of the MCU.